there's still a chance for them to win more a little bit this season and it actually be a good thing, which I'll talk about here in the video. For them also kind of draft a need that they really, really need this year. Well, not just this year, kind of, I guess, any year. The team just really needs it. It's a top two need for them. So if you guys like this Canucks content, you guys want to see more, then make sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed. I don't just do Canucks content here. I do hockey jersey stuff as I collect hockey jerseys, as you can see behind me. But I also like to talk about my favorite team here as well. So if there's something you like here and you figure you're going to like some of my content, then it would mean a ton if you guys subscribed. And with that said, let's dive into this topic. So I got some notes in front of me. I ended up writing some stuff down, kind of getting my... Usually when I record videos, I just kind of wing it. I just sit in front of the camera and just spew. But I decided to write some stuff down and be a little bit more structured in this video. So I want to start off by talking about one of the pros to the Canucks kind of winning more this year. And actually finishing off the season kind of strong. So one of my pros I have here is that they gained some confidence. This team has lacked confidence all year. They've been reamed on by fans and really just anyone in the hockey universe whatsoever has reamed on the Canucks this year. So I think it would be good for them to gain a little bit of confidence, which is exactly what these kind of games are going to do for them. Winning these close games and just winning all these games are definitely going to get them some confidence. One of the things it does is it just gives them not only confidence that they can win games, but confidence that they can defend. They've been defending a lot better under Rick Tockett, and that has definitely shown as they've led in fewer goals a game. They're actually killing penalties. Not only that, they're outscoring the opposition when killing penalties. They've scored more than they've led in so far with Rick Tockett on killing penalties, which is just ridiculous. They've scored so many shorthanded goals between PD and Miller. It's actually dumb. Not only does it build confidence for the team, but even just individual players. Like, you've had Petey, who's been playing such a good two-way game, but now you have other players also contributing and playing well two-way. You also have defensemen actually looking competent and looking good, which is crazy considering we have AHL-level defense right now. The only NHL-level defenseman we have right now is what Quinn Hughes and maybe you can count Tyler Myers in there that one's a little iffy otherwise we're rocking AHL defensemen right now with a couple defensemen hurt in our lineup and those guys have been doing really well some of that could be because of Rick talk of it some of that could also just be our structure down in the AHL maybe those players are just playing with that structure up in the NHL and it's helping them a lot whatever it may be it's shown really good impact and really positive signs for the Canucks so far one of the biggest things that was said, at least it seemed like one of the criticisms for Canucks, is that these players can't play defense. This, this group of players can't play with a structure. And I think so far, though it's early, they're kind of proving that they can indeed play with a structure. Hopefully they can continue that. You know, the Canucks with new coaches, they seem to get a little spark like they did with Bruce Boudreau. So hopefully they can uh, continue that, especially into next season, which is just the number one thing. Like I said, you can build all this confidence and whatnot, but you have to actually show it next year or else what's the point of building all this confidence and getting the structure down if next year they come out and they're just flat. So they 100% have to show it next season. But I'm still just talking about kind of how this season could be a good thing to finish off strong and why. One of the other things that we kind of just have to realize as Canucks fans is we were never really going to get Connor Bedard. Like obviously sure there was a little bit of a, a chance, but I genuinely don't think that this team is bad enough to be bottom of the league. I think right now they're playing the way this team should be playing. How they played at the start of the year and when we were what, like bottom four of the season not too long ago? That, in my opinion, is just not how good this team is. Right now, the way they're playing, maybe not four-game win streak good, but, like, they're not this bad, genuinely. Like, I think we are very much a middle-of-the-pack team. We're not, like, the best, but we're not the worst. So, for us to be as down low as we are right now, I think was just not, cons not, uh, what's the word I'm thinking here? You weren't able to keep doing that. The Canucks weren't able to keep losing at that pace. I think they just have too many good players to let that happen and be able to do that. When you look at some of the teams that are worse than us in the standings, our roster, especially our offense, is just way better in my opinion. No offense to those teams. They're purposely tanking, but we weren't. Like we were supposed to be good this year and we were definitely struggling. So this team playing to the way they're supposed to be playing now kind of just solidifies the fact that we aren't getting Bedard. Though on the contrary, there is still a percent chance we do, very, very small, but we most likely aren't. And this winning kind of just solidifies that. With Rick Tockett, we're getting a lot out of the big players on our team, which is really, really good to see. PD continues to just absolutely tear it up, being one of, in my opinion, he's a top 10 player in the NHL right now. 
Quinn Hughes is heavily underrated easily. I would even almost go as far as to say a top five defenseman in the league right now. And JT Miller is playing some of his best hockey this season right now under Rick Tockett. I don't want to see any more JT Miller slander, whether you don't like the contract or not. The guy's a stud, okay? He's been playing hard. He's been forechecking, being that offensive, forcing that offensive pressure that he can do and what he does when he's playing his best. But not only the top players, some of our smaller players, our depth players, are playing very, very well. Nils almond has been playing absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. I think for the cheap contract you got him on, he's a really, really good bottom six guy. Di Giuseppe has been really, really good. He kind of just put some spark into the lineup. He's not a points guy, but he's going to go out there. He's going to throw some hits, finish his checks, and he's going to play hard. He's really been doing that. I don't think he should be up on the line with Miller and Besser. But regardless, he's definitely a good player to have in the lineup, and he's definitely a good role player to call up when you need him. We've been getting a lot out of our fourth line right now, which is Sheldon Drys, Kravtsov, and Paul Colson. They're looking really good. I really, really like the duo ship between Kravtsov and Paul Colson. You see every single scrum that they get in, they're going in together. I absolutely love it. That needs to stay a thing. And it's honestly just fun watching Canucks games now. Before, when they were losing, obviously I wanted them to lose because we wanted the draft pick. But I forgot kind of how nice it is to see them win. And that sounds terrible. But I did genuinely forget how cool it was and how fun it was to watch this team win. So it is really, really cool to see some progress from them and actually see some wins coming out of them. It makes me happy. And obviously it shows a little bit of uh, just some bright spots and some progress that this team is taking, which is awesome. Now let's get into what could happen here. We're obviously playing better. The Canucks could gain some confidence. They're learning structure. Let's say they go into next year and they continue that. That's a plus. They may potentially make the playoffs. But not only that, you still got to think about their draft pick. Let's say the Canucks drop to 9th or 10th. There's a couple players that I think fill a huge need for this team right now. One of the biggest needs the Canucks have, the top need I think they have right now, it's honestly kind of a toss-up, but in my opinion, their top, top need right now is a good young right-handed defenseman. Obviously, they got Philip Peronik. I really like him, but it would be ideal to get that actual elite prospect that plays right-handed defense. The next up would be a centerman, which is kind of what you could get in the first round as well. There's a lot of really, really good centermen in this draft. So at the end of the day, it's going to decide, it's going to depend what the Canucks want to do, whether they want to draft center, but there are a couple right-handed defensemen that I think would be perfect, one of which I absolutely love. So as I was looking, there's this defenseman I never heard of. He seems to be climbing the ladder for whatever reason. David Rainbatcher. He is from Austria. This guy seems like just a solid two-way. He's a big guy, though. Solid two-way. He's 6'2", 189 pounds. He, like I said, did I say Norway? I meant he's from Austria. Sorry, that's my bad. But he seems like just a good two-way defenseman who can play both ends of the ice, and he's a bigger dude. This guy's, though, his rankings are a little bit lower, scouted between what's this 30 and as high as 11 so he's kind of in there kind of a could be a stretch if the Canucks picked him but kind of around that pick he seems like he could be a good option but my favorite player like if I'm not getting Bedard I think for some reason one of my favorite players in this draft is Ax Axel Sandin Palika and I think this kid is a beast first of all his name's fantastic like I, if he gets drafted by the Canucks I'm putting his name on a jersey ASAP He's also from Sweden. You know the Canucks with their Swedes. We got PD, we got Hoglander. Like Canucks love their Swedes. I think he'd be a really, really good defenseman. The only interesting thing is he is more of an offensive defenseman, in my opinion, at least judging by his points that he's gotten. I would say he's more of an offensive guy. So I don't know if he's someone you'd want to pair with Quinn Hughes, but he is somebody you could have on that second unit if you pair Hironik with Quinn Hughes, and then you just play a left-handed defenseman with him. I think this kid's really good. He's 181 pounds, 5'11", so a small dude, kind of like Quinn, but he's anywhere from, what's this, like 17th is the highest he's supposed to go. And somebody has him down at third, which is absolutely tripping in my opinion. The rest have him around 10, 11 range. So he could fall in the Canucks lap and they could just have no choice but to draft this guy, which in my opinion, I would be okay with. He's actually got some st decent stats. He's got He had 33 points in 29 games for the Junior National League in Sweden. But in the SHL right now, he's maybe not struggling. He's still only 18 years old. He's got five points in 22 games. Who knows how many minutes he's playing? I don't really see that on this list here. 
But regardless, I think there's still some upside for the Canucks to win and play better this season. I don't think it's all bad. I know everyone wants Connor Bedard, but this draft is so unbelievably stacked that we can get some confidence and play a little bit better and also still get a really good draft pick out of it. So there you guys have it. Let me know down in the comments your guys' opinions on this. Are you happy seeing the Canucks winning? Or do you just want to be a full-on tank and just try to still get Connor Bedard? Let me know your guys' opinions down in the comments. Again, if you guys are new, it would be a lot if you subscribed. Like the video if you enjoyed. I'll talk to you next one.